Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to the next session of the GMO launch conference. So this session will be about India, and as you, I guess, already have in mind, and uh, now that India has an ambitious 100 gigawatt solar target by 2022, and while the solar market has grown fast uh, in the country, has emerged as one of the world's top three markets in recent years, India has nearly two thirds of its solar way to go to meet its target. It's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, my friend uh, Supramanyam Bulipaka. He's the CEO of the National Solar Energy Federation of India. And indeed, he is the youngest chief executive officer of NSEFI. Uh, and NSEFI is the umbrella organization representing the solar energy companies in India that are active along the whole photovoltaic value chain. You can name them like project developers, manufacturers, engineering companies, financing institutions, and other stakeholders as well. So the National Solar Energy Federation of India is directed by leaders who have decades of experience leading private organizations as well as policy initiatives. So now it's time for you, Supermanyam. Uh, we are extremely interested uh, what your thoughts about India towards 100 gigawatt in time would be the stage is yours thank you dr florian uh, and i'm very happy to be here uh, for quite a long time we have been working closely with both smarter and solar power europe and i'm very happy that uh, they have launched this year's edition of global solar market outlook and i'm more than happy to uh, or rather thrilled to present about uh, the condition and ongoing situation on the ground in india and talk about whether we will be reaching 100 gigawatt in time. So I have divided my presentation into four parts or rather four pieces. I will talk about progress in the first part where I will uh, outline about what progress India has made in our journey towards 100 gigawatt. In the second part, I will talk about the preparations where how are we gearing up to you know, actually fight or actually get closer to our target of 100 gigawatt. On the third part, I talk about the existing preconditions that need to be addressed so that we can, in a sustainable way, achieve our goals. And in the fourth part, which every one of you might be very eager to understand, whether we'll be reaching 100 gigawatt by 2022, if not how much and when. So starting with the progress part. Before I go to the progress part, uh, I would like to uh, continue or can give you a quick brief of NSCFI. Uh, we, have, we are around 150 member organizations. Uh, we have been in India um, fighting the fight of Indian solar industry for the last nine years. We have represented each and every concern of industry with the government, especially the Northern Ministry, which is the Ministry of Energy and Energy. We have a lot of activities inside the Federation where it is being headed by our chairman, Mr. Pranav Mehta and former secretary Mr. Deepak Gupta Iyer is our director general. Now let's talk about the progress Indian solar industry has made, especially in the last 10 years. This is India's power mix in March 2020. So as of March 31st, India's total installed capacity is 372 gigawatt, out of which 36% of power or the installed capacity is from renewables. Out of this, 27% of total renewable capacity come from solar energy. We know India has ambitious goals and India's 2030 goal is to have 40% of its energy rather than power mix coming from renewable energy. So 10 years before our 40% uh, uh, target, I think we are certainly in a very good way uh, to achieve that particular target. Now let's switch our focus to RE capacity. Now it is uh, known to everyone that India's solar journey began slightly after 2009-2010 and in the last 10 years solar power has become one of the largest renewable energy sources in the country. Up until recently, until the large hydro power generation sources are brought into the ambit of renewable energy, solar was the second largest renewable energy source in the country. And it is as far as the predictions are concerned, solar is in a very comfortable position to replace wind as the second largest uh, uh, renewable energy source 
uh, considering hydro to be large hydro to be the first largest renewable energy source in the country. Now, when it comes to this year, especially in the first three months of 2020, where almost one month we have lost because of the ongoing pandemic, India has installed almost one gigawatt of uh, solar in the country, and our total installations stand at around 36,600 megawatts. So this is about what we are, where we are. At. Now let's see how far we have come since when we started this solar policy procedure. India, like I said, was at zero megawatt 12 years back. Today, at 35,000 megawatts, which is the figure of December 2020, India has become the world's fifth largest country when it comes to the capacity installed and third largest market when it comes to year-on-year -year growth. As you can see here clearly, from 2015, that is from 5,000 megawatt, in 2020 up to 35,000 megawatt, we have installed 30,000 megawatt in five years. There were two reasons behind this. One, until 2014, the previous government's target was to install 20 gigawatt by 2022. But when the new government took over under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi, the target was revised. And this target, you should mind and keep in your mind, is both ambitious yet pragmatic to have 100 gigawatt of solar by 2022 and consequently 175 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2022. Now, once the target was reset, there was a lot of momentum in the market and India witnessed one of the largest or rather the sharpest increase in a developing country when it comes to solar installation. Let's talk about investments. This report of UNEP and Frankfurt and Bloomberg and EFO released just a couple of weeks back where it talks about $9.3 billion investment coming into renewable energy in India. But that is the figure of renewable energy coming from outside. But on my right side of the screen, if you see, in the last four years, or rather especially in the last three years, and comparing, comparing it quarterly wise, on an average, every year, there was no less than $10 billion in investment in solar energy in India. If you might ask why such sudden change or why such huge amounts of investment coming into solar, and why India, even though it's little $9.3 billion a year, India is, though the farthest third, but is still a lucrative destination for renewable energy investments in the country. Because one, we are a developing country. Two, we have a policy stability. And three, India, since it's, it's a developing country, there is untapped demand as well as untapped potential. You must have heard a lot of presentations uh, before and after me also. And what makes India unique or what keeps India in a unique position is India's sun days. India has more than 300 sun days a year and our average annual irradiance is around 4.2 kilowatt hour per meter square per day and there are other locations in the country where this intensity increases even manifold until 6 to 6 point. So we have seen how we India marched into the world's top five countries in terms of solar installations, how we are the world's third largest solar market in the world, and how, at least in Asia, we are the second and in the world we are fourth in terms of attracting investment in the new energy sector in general and in solar sector in specific over the last three to four years. Now, let me take you through the preparations part. All of you know that as of now, okay, as you have seen in my graphs, a little while ago, out of 100 gigawatt, we have installed 35 gigawatt by the end of December 2019. And it is logical to come to the conclusion that in the next three years, we have to triple our annual installations so that we'll uh, achieve our target. An Indian government and Indian industry is well poised to put in maximum efforts for achieving this target. And for as a testament of this, I'll take you through the three large significant milestones that we have achieved just in this year, especially in the last three months. This is, in this year, in February 2020, India hosted the world's largest renewable energy plus storage tender. And there, the price that was discovered for peak power price was 5.6 US dollar cents per unit. And this 
tender, which was uh, tendered for around 1200 megawatt, that is 1.2 gigawatt, requires the company to supply a firm power of half of the capacity, that is 600 megawatt, for six hours during peak demand time. That is either in the morning 5.30 to 9.30 or at night or in the evening to night from 5.30 to 12.30 a.m. And this will be uh, done on the basis of day and uh, demand. And this project is expected to install at least 3 gigawatt hour of energy storage and two companies who are NHGFI members, in fact they are NHGFI founding members who founded NHGFI 9 years back, they won this tender. And both of them will be using a mix of wind, solar and storage. And that storage is varying from pumped hydro in one case and battery storage in other case. What I want to say here or what I want to convey here is that India is not only looking at its target, but India is also looking at becoming a world leader when it comes to proliferation of grid scale batteries. 5.6 US dollar cents is something that has been discovered in India and has completely priced out, priced out thermal or coal based, coal based generation in the country. Now, there are a lot of countries who are opting for this model. There are a lot of countries, our European counterparts, our Latin American counterparts, especially in, even in Australia. These kind of tenders are being developed, being discovered, but 5.6 US dollar cents at peak power is the world's lowest peak tariff for any tender of this composition. Now let's talk about another significant achievement that India achieved not so long ago. India's first round the clock renewable energy tender. In May 2020, while the entire country, or rather I should, I am not wrong when I say almost 60 to 70 percent of the world was in lockdown, India conducted its first round the clock renewable energy tender. And during this tender, one of India's company won the round the clock tariff of 3.8 US dollar cents for per unit, where this price or uh, this PPA price will be increased 3% annually until 15 years. And the main significant or rather salient feature of this tender is that the, the project or the developer will ensure that the plant or the project will be maintaining at 80% of capacity utilization factor annually. This is by the least 4% of normal renewable energy or normal solar energy uh, capital cap capacity utilization factor. And also when it comes to plant load factor, the companies, the, the projects is uh, required to maintain the PLF until by 70% every month. So this is an innovative bid and this is India's first on the clock bid and this is one of the most I would say sustainable and lucrative prices that has been discovered for a project or a tender that has been tended out for round the clock and purely based on renewables and storage. And again, one of NSCFI's founding members won this tender. Now, just one week before today, that is last week, India concluded world's largest solar tender worth six billion dollars. I repeat, six billion dollars. In this project of $6 billion, 8 gigawatt of solar will be developed with 2 gigawatt of solar cell and manufacturing capacity and it will almost create 400,000 jobs in the next 4 years in the country. Out of this 8 gigawatt, 2 gigawatt will be commissioned in the next 2 years and the 6 gigawatt will be installed in the subsequent years with 2 gigawatt every year. And this will also make India the house of one of the largest single on-site capacity project with one project at a single location having that will be having capacity more than 2 gigawatts. And again, NSCFI member Adani won this time. So now you have to understand one thing here. When the entire paradigm of business and economy is completely uncertain or was completely uncertain and almost virtually 60 to 70 percent of the world went under lockdown, India completed three of its renewable energy tenders with three milestones. What does that say about Indian market? What does this say about Indian industry? It's simple. It reflects or rather resonates the resilience at with, with which Indian solar industry has been shaped 
has been brought up and it also talks a great length about the potential and the ecosystem that has been developed to promote and harness solar energy in India. Now, shifting our focus to preconditions, I have shown you a very good picture of India's progress. I have also showed you how we are preparing or gearing up with more than just in the last three months, three, three gigawatt of tender of uh, normal RTC and storage and eight gigawatt of standalone solar tenders that have been laid out. Three address for India to achieve its goal. So the first goal, the first issue uh, that is hampering us from achieving our goal is the renewable purchase obligation. So India has set an ambitious renewable purchase obligation of 21% of the total energy mix to come from renewables by the end of 2022 out of which 10.5% should come from solar. Now this is not being fully or strictly enforced in different states and more than half of Indian states are still lagging behind their RPO obligation. If the central government which uh, over the last 2-3 months we are very happy that the government is taking good uh, initiatives and trying to make it accountable. If they can enforce this PPA, this renewable purchase obligations, it will be of a great help for states to stick to their RPOs and help India to achieve its goal. The second point, which is a very, very controversial issue and has sort of to the large extent, uh, personally for us and also the industry, it has dragged us down in 2019 is PPA renegotiation. One state in India has decided to renegotiate all the existing PPAs that have been in the country in, in that particular state in the last year. Though the sanctity of PPA is judicially uh, withheld and uh, many courts and many of the judgments have come in favor of developers, it still remains as a very sort of a small black mark in India's solar journey and uh, however now after one and a half year things look to be uh, changing and uh, the legal course that most of the industry has taken seems to be paid off but the very idea of renegotiating a sacrosanct or a sanctuous PPA will hamper or will uh, you know drive away the sentiment of investors. So we hope and we and we are very happy that the central government has stepped in at the right time and we hope it will not be repeated with other states or other entities in the future. The third point is the taxation. Uh, it is a known fact to many of you and for those of you who don't know that uh, India has shifted it in, into a uniform tax system a couple of years back. It's called GST and before that in the old tax regime the tax on solar was to some extent zero and after it was simply 5%. But this new regime sort of added complications on the way uh, the taxation is done for solar projects because generally the engineering part and the procurement part and the construction part are most often handled by different people and they are now taxed differently and there is a lot of ambiguous uh, ambiguity going on and throughout the chain right from developers, EPCs, procurers, contractors, everyone is undergoing sort of, uh, you know, confused state on how this can be done. So from the federation, we have proposed a simpler structure of 5% which will, you know, override all of this confusion and bring back the clarity that we had before. The fourth part, that is the elephant in the room, uh, which uh, often everyone doesn't talk about and which is now the need of the hour and which everyone is now emphasizing is on the manufacturing. As you know, India is still uh, not a manufacturing rich country when it comes to uh, some leading uh, industrial sectors and it goes same for solar in the country. Uh, India's manufacturing capacity of solar cells is at around 3 gigawatt and modules is around 10 gigawatt and 80% of our demand is met from imports. Now India, it is not safe to say we have missed the bus, especially in today's context. But India requires a comprehensive and a cohesive manufacturing policy which will give boost for high efficient and upcoming technologies instead of obsolete technologies in the past. So in the new economic stimulus and relief package that has been announced by the government, uh, 
as part of the covid relief measures the government has announced solar cell manufacturing to be a champion sector and we are closely working with the government to set up uh, their new uh, manufacturing policy and we hope very soon we will have uh, positive results the fifth point which is very uh, sort of a funny story if you see countries like germany countries like france italy even australia as a matter of fact usa their solar proliferation started from distributed generation from rooftop and got expanded to utility scale in india the story is other way around today out of 35.6 gigawatt of installed capacity we have not more than 4 gigawatt of rooftop that is less than 10, or less than 20% and our rooftop capacity target is 40 gigawatt by 2022 so we have just 10% of the target with two years to go so there are different factors india is a federal structure electricity states are there states have their own power and utilities are debt ridden i can name thousand problems that are hampering or that are causing this problem however there should be a collaborative or collective approach both from the state central and industrial stakeholders to establish a discourse and solve these issues so that the rooftop capacity target if not 40 gigawatt at least 10 to 15 gigawatt can be reached in the next 2 to 3 payment delays of course i kept it in the last because it was in the first a couple of months back or as even as six months back but now government of india has become very proactive in addressing these issues and coming up with innovative solutions like letter of credit uh, and safeguarding it in the tender now to the final segment where are we in 100 gigawatt journey as of today you can see that 36% of the capacity which we want to install by 2022 we have installed 18% is in various stages of commissioning 26% is tendered and 20% to be tendered if you see our track record you might say that it is now at no cost or no way we can achieve our target however there are or there is an enabler in terms of a scheme called kusum through kusum government wants to install 25000 megawatt of distributed solar in the country in the next year and the beauty of distributed solar is it is decentralized it doesn't require large tenders it doesn't require large infrastructure it is more of decentralized with different players throughout the country spread throughout the geography of india in different states and that is the way i think kusum scheme will play a silent hero role in this 100 gigawatt of uh, target if you see in the component a uh, the government wants to install 10 gigawatt of solar on the barren lands and sometimes they have also given us permission for uh, installing it on uh, uh, agriculture lands and with nscfi and with indo german energy forum we are trying to develop a coercive policy for agro pv to collocate solar and agriculture so that India's uh, goal of having 2022 uh, 100 gigawatt by 2022 and doubling the power income by 2022 can be achieved parallel. Now there the incentives are very good, and the farmer can install up to 2 megawatt from 500 kilowatt system in on his uh, farmland and connect to the nearest supply. In component B, India for the first time wants to install 2 million standalone pumps in the country, and these pumps will be. Uh, directly uh, subsidized uh, up to 60%, 30% from the state, 30% from the center uh, to the farmers, and uh, they will be, uh, uh, you know, farmers will be in a position to use solar-based solar pumps, which are agricultural pumps, to irrigate their fields. Now, there is another aspect, which is sort of a key issue in the Indian context, where uh, if you see. we have a highly subsidized agriculture power sector and kusum is sort of a stalwart or or a hero in disguise to address two things one to increase india's solar capacity and two to decrease the debt burden on the discoms who are subsidizing india's uh, agricultural consumers so in the component c the grid connected farmer can connect his solar pump to the grid use how much ever he can and then pump the extra unit into the grid and earn revenue there. that is another good uh, part of this competency in the kusum so 
on one hand we talk about large scale projects which are doing good on second hand we say rooftop is sort of dim but it, there is still hope on the third hand we have this guy kusum who is right in charge and right in a good position to uh, you know take india closer to our target and you not believe me even amidst lockdown solar pump sector in the country has not the forecasts are not uh, decreased even in the solar normal forecast we have corrected our forecast but when it comes to pumps we have to uh, we are still thinking we might have to increase it because agrarian activity has amplified and of course india is an agrarian economy and we have to make maximum utilization of that so now that brings to my last slide what will we do where will we go so i have a disclaimer with this slide which i will uh, tell in my conclusion uh, but there are two scenarios one is a low scenario of outlook and one is the high scenario of outlook. in the low scenario of outlook we might uh, end up halfway mark or 50 gigawatt shy of our target and in the high scenario we might end up almost nearer to the installed capacity that is around 95.6 gigawatt now you might say how are you assuming around 50 gigawatt installations in 2 years there is a rational here in the high scenario there are lot of projects in the country today that that are uh, looking for extension or that have been impacted by covid so this uh, so um, i think uh, i have lost my slides uh, i am unable to project them but what i wanted to convey was that uh, in a high scenario india will be sort of in a good position to install 95.6 gigawatt of solar in the next 3 years uh, while we'll be falling 4 gigawatt short of our original target uh, in the low scenario we'll be somewhere around uh, 55.52 gigawatt which is around 35 gigawatt less than uh, 45 gigawatt less than our initial uh, target so with this i would like to conclude that with a very famous saying that an economist a wise man once said that an economist is an expert who will know tomorrow why the things he predicted yesterday didn't happen today so there is no way we can predict what will happen in the indian market or in any market especially in the wake of covid and all but it is safer to understand and assume that given the current scenario we are in a very good position to inch very close to our target and of course india has a higher goal of 300 gigawatt by 2030 and 40% of our energy mix by 2030 and whatever has been done by the government over the last 4 5 years and last 6 years in the new government to cover last 2 years in terms of innovative tendering everything has been in line with promoting this particular aspect of uh, uh, 100 gigawatt of solar so i would like to conclude by saying that india is the place where the action is happening very soon we will become the fourth largest solar installed country in the world and with if everything happens right even maybe this year we might uh, overtake us to become the second largest market in the world and i'm very happy uh, to have been contributed uh, for contributing to uh, uh, the gmo this is my second year where i've been involved in gmo's uh, india market report and i hope that everyone will be very excited to learn more about uh, Uh, indian market and uh, they will be even more eager to know how things go forward and thanks very much again to uh, intersolar smarter e sorry uh, and even uh, solar power europe congratulations to both of you for this wonderful event and i think we can take questions now thank you very much uh, supramanyam for this uh, insights and uh, it was indeed very interesting for for me to to listen to you Uh, your presentation and uh, to get some more insights uh, we have some uh, questions collected uh, may i start with the first one can you quickly summarize what are the main points which will drive india to achieve the 100 gigawatt goal so uh, that's a very good question uh, like i said uh, we have um, i always uh, tell this answer everywhere uh, there are three c's that india should uh, keep in mind to take us towards the 100 gigawatt goal one is capital the more liquidity in the market the better the situation for upcoming bids and the industry 
when i talk about liquidity for large scale players they need to get paid when they install projects when they commission projects and that should be done at time because it is their equity that is being stuck and when it comes to small scale players the subsidy and the direct benefit transfer should be done directly to the end consumer not through the mediums of uh, government utilities where the process will become cumbersome so the c the first c is the capital part the second c is curtailment you know india has done a marvelous job in according must run status for solar plants in the country when i say must run any utility cannot deduct or stop power from any solar plant in the country at any given point of time except in except, exceptional situations where the grid is being affected however there are some states which are trying to uh, you know maybe they have a higher energy mix of other sources or maybe they think solar is somewhat costlier because the pps was signed before they are trying to curtail it und unduly if you uh, address that point india's both investor sentiment will increase and also the sustainability of existing products will also be good at nscfi we have a live tracker every day at night at 12 o'clock at night i open my email i get a alert of how many projects in india have been curtailed we get the data from the ground and every friday the minister the secretary the responsible utility get a mail from my name to them saying that these are the states where the power has been curtailed these are the reasons given and these are the things that we think that are not syncing with the reason that have, they have given and the third c which is very important not only for india but for any other country is certainty policy certainty is something that every industry looks forward to unfortunately uh, i have to acknowledge it on this platform that there have been some flip flops over the last 2 3 years which did not cause much of disruption but still uh, i would say they were like sort of a bumpers in our journey uh, to 100 gigawatt uh, however now the government is also stable now the infrastructure or the machinery government machinery is taking solar very seriously and i think very soon um, we will also get new policy policies and uh, this might take us more nearer to our 100 gigawatt goal all right then we have a second uh, one um, concerning maybe it is the large scale distributed generation installation projects uh, for the contribution to the 100 gigawatt and um, coming to that who will finance those kind of projects uh financing the large scale projects yes uh, when it when it comes to the large scale distributed generation installations okay so this is not the utility scale large scale distributed generation correct yes uh it is a very good question in fact uh, just one month back exactly one month back while we were celebrating our 9th anniversary we had this discussion with development international development funds like world bank GIZ, KFW, DFID, and all. And you should understand, every international fund is both curious as well as thrilled about India's distributed energy market. Because today, per capita of income of India is increasing steadily. India's energy demand is increasing steadily. People, the capacity of people paying is increasing. So, distributed gener energy generation is the place where the money is. Uh, we have companies like uh, uh, I won't I don't I won't name the companies, but they have been acquired by multinational companies from Malaysia, from Europe, from USA. So the fund influx has never been an issue. And in fact, we were giving report to the ministry. In the last two years alone, we had 9.2 billion dollars of foreign investments in the solar energy sector. 9.2 billion alone in solar energy sector is something which is almost. 12% of india's in, in, uh, fdi in the country in developmental infrastructure sector so that says how foreign investors are very interested and inclined towards distributed generation in the country and the second part india's own finance machinery india's banks india's mbfcs india's public sector undertaking banks they are the ones who have been given mandate mind it india's renewable energy sector is under priority lending sector that means in any given financial year you have to give a particular amount of loan or disperse particular amount of funds to solar sector and this and this is a mandate given by the government and these banks or these finance institutions have to be upheld uh, or withheld if they don't do that so that is also another second instrument and the third instrument which i think is sort of slowly gaining traction is private equity private equity is indian private equity foreign of course has been always part of 
in integral part of india's market and uh, they are also trying to bring lot of lots of uh, euros and dollars into indian market so i think one to summarize one there is no girth india is a lucrative destination second the enabling infrastructure is so easy and so that, that uh, it will attract investments and investors come what may all right uh, next question so when it comes to the manufacturing part you you already had in your presentation will there uh, the manufacturing will be solar to solar which means there will be no coal used for the manufacturing of the cells a few information about that so uh, you're talking about the raw materials and the uh, other part right Right, of course, uh, not only the raw materials, but when it comes to the energy you, you need to produce uh, or to manufacture the cells, ah, yes. will those um, energy be sourced um, from, from solar or from other renewable energy sources? Or what do you think? So, I mean, it is very early for me to comment on this part as of now. Uh, uh, but if you see the largest tender of $6 billion that completed just one week back, so the company is developing six gigawatt of solar installation and two gigawatt of manufacturing. And this six gigawatt will be coming in next four or five years. So naturally it might be a situation where it might consume it also, but I'm not sure, but uh, it is too early to say uh, as of now. And the second thing is, uh, see today, even after the lockdown has been imposed, we had this wonderful unique opportunity to have around 30% of our energy coming from renewable sources. While our goal was to have 40% by 2022, because of lockdown and decreased demand, we had 30% coming from our resources. So come what may, India's strategy, or rather India's uh, path ahead, is to get or inculcate as much ARI into the grid as much as possible, so that we can propel our industry and our infrastructure through this energy. All right, thank you. Last question. There's a strong priority for water pumps. Uh, are there aquifers replenished every year with the monsoons or is uh, there a depletion problem? So there is the, so India, you know, we have this word called Jugad that is frugal innovation. We try to find our own solutions or our own way of dealing with problems. So every tender has inbuilt maintenance and uh, annual maintenance co and commissioning issues and the company that is responsible for that has to deal with it so uh, irrespective of the way monsoon uh, uh, shapes up or things are there uh, the replacement rate as of now is very less in the country from my knowledge and on the other hand if you see uh, most of these things are non-submersible where they are not directly exposed to the uh, ground silt or groundwater uh, levels. So there it sort of re reduces the rate of replacement and maintenance there. But having said that, India is well poised to become Asia's hub spot for solar based pumps, both on grid and off grid. And uh, we are very happy to support government initiative on that. And maybe in the very near future, we'll be coming up with largest uh, tenders also, just like we have seen in manufacturing and utility scale. Perfect. So time is over now. Um, I'd like to thank you very much again for this uh, insightful presentation. Of course, I'd like to thank the audience uh, as well. Uh, yes, so um, now it's time for the lunch break or wherever you are on the wall for a break for, uh, for two hours. And then we will uh, start the next sessions uh, regarding Brazil and what's happening uh, over there. So thank you very much and uh, have a nice lunch break. Thank you.